Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, uh, we are wrapping up this year. This is the last official lesson that we're going to be doing, 10.1.5. Uh, there is going to be a chapter test on Friday of this week, um, but you're not going to just have to have it done by Friday. If you can get it done on Friday, that would be ideal. I know it's a three-day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, and some of you might have plans to go out of town. So instead of making the test due like I normally do at 11.59 on Sunday, um, I'm actually going to extend it all the way out until Wednesday the 27th. You know, for those of you that are out of town and you're not getting back till Monday, Maybe you start the test on Tuesday and make sure it's done by Wednesday. Um, and that would conclude everything. But this lesson is going to replace the actual lesson that I would have done for 10.1.5 because that one really needs you to be in class doing hands-on work with partners. Um, and I just couldn't figure out a way to make this really ideally work for distance learning. Um, and this is a task that I do every single year toward the end of the year, and students can do this individually without too much trouble. And I've actually got another one that I'm going to sign on on Wednesday before I um, post a study guide on Thursday, and then the test will be posted on, on Friday. So we've got a couple of days to work on this. Uh, this is going to be relatively brief because I'm just going to kind of clarify what the directions are. And then maybe tomorrow I might uh, post a, a little bit more information to help you along the way. Because while I believe the first couple parts of this uh, Tasks are relatively easy and straightforward. Part C generally gives students trouble. So, um, and that's with them being able to work within their teams usually and bounce ideas off each other. And I know you're going to be most likely working individually. So, I'll try and help you out with that a little bit. So, this uh, you can uh, print off these directions. Um, what is going on here? Stop it. You can print these off because I've got this posted uh, on the classroom along with this video, or you could just watch the video, I suppose, and write things down. But I think it's a good idea to, to at least open this up so you can see it on your computer screen if, if you've got the capability to do that. So uh, let me go ahead and go to here. All right, so here's uh, the directions. The diagram here shows three glasses. They're not drawn to scale. Um, but then we're kind of used to that happening sometimes. And the measurements are all in centimeters, okay? So notice how you've got, this is a cylinder shape. This has a cylinder part on the top and a hemisphere on the bottom. This has a cone shape, okay? So these are just basically saying that. Glass one is a cylinder where the diameter of the cylinder is five centimeters and the height of the cylinder is six. Here you've got a hemisphere that is uh, a, six, a six centimeter diameter for both the cylinder and the hemisphere. And then this portion is three centimeters. And I guess the radius of this sphere, this hemisphere, would be three by three by three. So that's three centimeters. And then with this uh, bowl three, or the bowl of glass three is an inverted cone. Uh, the diameter of the of the circular base is six centimeters, and this is something that's really important. The slant height, this dimension here, is uh, is six centimeters. That is not the height of the cone. Okay. So when we get to uh, part A, question A says find the vertical height of the glass or of the bowl of glass three. So if you think about it, you know the the Diameter of the circular part, the circular base is six, meaning the radius has to be three, correct? The height is going to be perpendicular to that radius, and this is going to form a right triangle. So what theorem will we use to figure out the height that we need to find the volume of this cone? You're going to be using Pythagorean theorem to figure this out. So all you have to do for part A is declare what is the answer for the height of this cone and declare it with centimeters. How many centimeters is that? And I'll give you a hint. If you got an answer that's more than six, you've made a mistake. Because remember, in a right triangle, the hypotenuse, which we see here is six, is the longest side. So this leg and this leg must be less than six. Just keep that in mind. 
All right, part B is where we start doing uh, the work with our formulas. Calculate the volume of each of these bulls, or each of the bulls of these classes. So here you've got a straightforward cylinder. Use your formula for cylinders. Here, a little bit more complicated because you've got that cylinder on the top part with the three centimeter height, and you've got that half of a sphere for the bottom part, which has the three centimeter radius. Find those individually and then add them together. And then here, take your formula for the volume of a cone. After you've found what that height is, you can then figure that out. Okay, now we get to part C. This is the part where most of the time students struggle. I've drawn in these dashed lines. It's important for you to note that this is three centimeters, this is three centimeters, and this is three centimeters, and also the height of that cylinder. But this is going to be important for you to understand here. The glass here is filled with water, and then half of that water has been poured out. You need to figure out what the new height is. Okay, so right now, the height of the water, if it was completely full, would be a total of six centimeters. But when you pour out half of it, where is that line? And once you know what the line is, then you could figure out what the height is. But this is going to be the tricky part, okay? So take your time with it. I have full confidence that parts, if you've been doing all the work up until now, and you understand uh, or at least know where to find the formulas for cylinders, cones, and, and spheres, you should have no trouble at all with part B. And since we did so much work with Pythagorean theorem in chapter nine, you should have no problems with part A. But this part is tricky, so take your time with it, okay? Tomorrow I will post a video um, where I will show you a little bit more information about this, and then uh, maybe Wednesday I'll um, include with the homework, I'll include what all the answers are so you can check to see if you were doing everything okay. All right, so. Uh, have fun with this. If you're a math nerdly like me and you find this sort of thing kind of fun, um, if you don't find it fun, then just do your job and get it out of the way because these are similar, if not exactly like the types of problems you can expect to see on the chapter test, which will be your last big grade of the semester in of eighth grade. And congratulations, you've made it. Most of you, all of you, I think. Um, have made it and you've done a great job and uh, good luck in the future. I don't know why I'm saying this now. I'm going to be talking to you later on in the week. I'll give you your congratulations later. Just rescind everything that I just said. All right. Uh, take care and good luck with everything. Bye. Hey, feeling good.